I did a video a couple of weeks back. I called it Trust Your Gut. And today I was going to get into a project because it's it's been very popular. I've seen a lot of people talking about it. And I just had this gut feeling. And I did another video the other day about, you know, three things to avoid uh, when when going into a new project. And, you know, those things are loud and clear in this project. So at the end of this video, I'm going to talk, the last thing I'm going to talk about is this project I'm not getting into, why I'm going against the crowd and why I'm trusting my gut and listening to my own advice on this one. That's going to be last up. What we're going to do today, today's our weekly update. We're going to talk about three projects I am in that I will stay in uh, that have been working so far. <laughs> that could change. As you know, the DeFi is a special place and let's get right down to it. Okay, so the first project I'm talking about is EasyBot. For those of you who watch me know that I am an EasyBot. I've been an EasyBot for a while. Um, EasyBot is a, is a um, software that trades crypto through an API with your exchange. So you keep your money on your exchange and it sends buy and sell signals um, to buy and sell or sell that crypto. Well, this last couple of weeks, let me pull up my handy dandy spreadsheet here. Spreadsheet, spreadsheet. Okay, so my handy dandy spreadsheet here, um, I've been tracking this. I mean, I've been in EasyBot for over a year now. I started September, I think it was like end of August of 2022. Here we are a year later. The good thing about EasyBot is that I have never, um, no one's ever rugged me because it's my exchange. Now, if Binance US rugs, we're gonna have a problem. Um, but as you can see, it's not a huge problem, but it is the biggest stake of what I talk about on this crypto program. It is the biggest stake that I have. Now, remember, everything I tell you today is not financial advice. I am not a financial advisor. I know I look like one, but I am not one. I'm just showing you what I'm doing, and this is my journey. There's risk in all these things. I shouldn't have to say this over and over again, but I have to say this. This is only for risk capital. So if you lose your money, don't don't come crying to me because I didn't do it. I didn't put your money in, in the, um, I didn't put your money up on the blackjack table. That's what this is. This is very speculative investments. It's not even investments, it's speculative. And I'm not telling you what to do. Enough about that, let's get on here. So EasyBot, so as you can see, I have about, oh, you can't see that. Let's put it down here, you can see it now. I have about $3,027 in my Binance US that's purely used to trade on EasyBot. I mean, there's a couple of things in there that aren't being traded, like a little bit of Ripple, and I have to have BNB there for gas fees. But this is what it is. This week, I did not have a profit of seven point. Oh, that's the wrong week. That's why. This week, I had a profit of $4.26. I thought the bots would be more active with the Fed announcement. Um, and for those of you who follow the, the, federal, um, the federal Reserve, the FOMC, the federal, federal Open Market Committee meeting was less last week. And... It was it wasn't a sleeper because you know we knew there's a 97% chance they weren't going to raise the rate. But what they talked about is the rates would be higher for a longer period. Now, why am I telling you this? Well, this has a direct impact on crypto. If if the, if other people can get seven, eight, nine percent interest rates out there without having to risk much, you know the crypto space is not as as, as attractive as if rates were one, two percent and they could get a 10, 20, 30% in crypto, that might be worth the risk. But that's a problem for crypto because crypto competes against stocks, it competes against bonds, it competes against other things where you can put your money for an investment. Now, I don't believe that crypto is investments right now. You know, I do believe that Bitcoin might be an investment, although the SEC might argue either way on Bitcoin and all these things. But long story short is that the Fed met, um, it wasn't as big of a trading week as I thought it was going to be, but I still made a 0.13% return. If you annualize that, just take that, multiply it by, oh God, I got to do public math. Multiply that 0.13%. So I take 0.13 times 52 weeks. If you annualize that return, it's like a 6.76 return, not really beating inflation. So EasyBot has disappointed, but I will tell you that I kind of, I'm not using EasyBot exactly like it's meant to be used. I almost use it leveraged, but the problem with that is that it is a Martingale DCA bot, and as you buy down, well, I said the bot had $2,000 in it, but it really didn't have enough USDT to cover to buy it down, so it should still be trading within a realm right now. But I'm okay with that. I'm gonna play this out because these are the returns I was having for a bit. You know, they were averaging, you know, about 20 bucks a week, so what is that, a... Um, 
pretty decent return, three, two to three, one to two to three percent a week. And there's a day we'll get back to that. But right now it's in a holding pattern. I'll continue to update you on EasyBot. But that's enough about that. Let's go back. Let's go to this one right here. Kiopi. I talk about Kiopi a lot. It's one of those that shouldn't be performing, but is still performing. It is still paying me. I put more money in last week. I doubled my stake. So I'm at $400 now. My risk tolerance is low. So I don't like to put in thousands of dollars anymore because I, I just, I, I can't stand losing that money. So only put in what you're willing to lose. So this one, as you can see, I've had $830 returned to me in QOP. I've put a total in of $891. So what you can see here is that I'm almost ROI on all the money I've put in. So I'm almost playing with house money, almost, not quite. I still have about what is that $61 to make up? And then this money is just about house money. All the other money's come back to me. So that is pretty cool. So I'm going to keep playing Kiopi. I'm, I'm ride or die on this one. You know, there's, I got, um, I have two stakes in right now. As you can see that this Bitcoin stake is done. I, I got a 60% return and my initial investment back. This one here, um, this is the Bitcoin I'm in now. I've gotten a 25% return. So it doesn't look like this is going to be as strong as this return. I think the returns are slowly coming down, which is not my favorite sign. Um, but I also put in Litecoin. I've got one day under my belt with Litecoin, 1.54% in Litecoin. Um, but who knows? This might catch up. We're, we're not quite half of what it was in the 30-day cycle before that. So Kiopi still paying out. Unbelievably still paying out. I have almost completely ROI, ROI'd. And as soon as I hit that 891 mark, that's all the stakes I've had in, then everything else, then I'm truly playing with house money. So I think that's pretty cool. So I'll keep playing this one. Um, this has been a fun one. Now, next up, Rev Token. This, this is kind of, actually, I guess I have four plays today. I guess there's four of them I'm going to talk about because I forgot. I have Rev Token in here. So Rev Token, they are bringing honesty, transparency, and trust back to DeFi. There are no referral fees. There are no referral codes or anything like that. So I'm just telling you about this because it's just something I'm in. Um, I liked I liked what they talked about on their Discord. I like the fact that they, they want to do um, a true KYC because we've seen KYCs. Um, people still abscound with our money when they do a KY. I mean, when they even if they're KYC'd and audited or even doxed. So I like that they're going to try to bring a new type, type of KYC um, if you've seen my videos before, I've shown you this before, but RevToken, check it out, RevToken.finance. Um, check it out. It might be something you're interested in. I'm interested in it. Doesn't mean you have to. I'm not telling you to buy this one. It just interested me. So RevToken, they, what they do, you buy their coin and there's only 10 million coins. They do coin burns and there's a 10% buy and sell fee. Well, well, that money goes back to the community in the form of rewards. The rewards are not in their own token because that would depreciate the value of their token. So the rev, the rev rewards come in the form of Matic. So I have had not a ton. I'm over a dollar in my Matic rewards. I'm not expecting a lot because it's a very, very low cap market cap um, coin right now because they're still working on growing. They're not doing a lot of hype. They're not paying out big dollar referral fees like some of the... Um, auditing companies we've seen in the past. They're not, they're not paying all these marketers, um, YouTubers to market their product. They, they're just trying to put out good KYC services. And there's a couple of other things they're going to be doing to generate revenue. So neat project. I like them. I like the attitude they had on the Discord. The founders are in there talking to the, the group. They're very excited. Um, so check them out, revtoken.finance. And I did not get paid for this. There is no money coming my way from RevToken. If they want to pay me, that's fine. Um, but I would let you know that, and they're not. So let's let's move on. <laughs> um, let's move on to my last one before we get into the project. I will not be getting into, but this is something I am in. It is called BNB All Stars. It is an ROI DAP. I thought I'd go back to the old school and have some fun with this one. I put a hundred dollars in, and here's the deal: you have to you have to um, compound three times before you can pull your money out. Remember how they used to do like six ones, three ones? Well, this is a three one three times compounding and you can pull your money out. And if it goes more than 48 hours, it cuts off the, t the, the it stops um, accruing um, interest or whatever you want to call it. 
So what I do on this one is I compound every 24 hours for three times, and then I let it sit for 48 hours and pull that out. So this last week, uh, let's see what I got. In, in, let's pull this up. So rev token, here you go, 0 0.086 return. So not a big return, not worth mentioning. Tokens kind of have a, a stable price pretty much. But BNB All-Stars, I put $100 in. Because of compounding, it's now worth $122. Um, I had $3.40 a reward, so about a 3.4% return. Now, you see these returns are starting to increase. That's because I'm my initial investment was $100. i am compounding with their money, so I get a little bit more money each week back, and that's how compounding works. So 3.4% return. So those are the three, four projects, I guess. One, two, three, four projects that I'm still in that are working. I know I said three in the beginning. I keep going back to it's really four. So those are the projects that are working for me right now. I am looking at several new projects to get into. I looked at one this week and just out of coincidence, there's this one right here. It's called Trinity AI. They're advertising it right here, right? Trinity.ai. I've seen a lot of YouTubers talk about this project. Now, the first thing I noticed and the and the first thing I noticed about this project, it is a QOP copycat, right? So QOP has gotten a lot of press lately. It's all over the place. It works. It's been around for a while. It was only a matter of time before someone did a QOP copycat. Now, this one, you know, as you can see, it doesn't look that much different than QOP, but it's truly a copycat. So the first red flag that I see on this project is that it's a copycat of another project. That's a red flag. The white paper, right? It's, it is pretty much um, based on almost promising returns, big returns, daily returns, 1.25 to 4% for 30 days. Da trial plan, 0.8% for five days. So you have to stake for 30 days in this one. Um, and they're going to give you anywhere from 1.25 to 4% a day. Okay. So they're going to keep your money. You can't touch it. I get it. It's like QOP. It, it, it stakes the money. Um, but these are things that worry me. The referral program is extraordinarily robust, which is probably why you've been hearing it on a lot of their YouTubers because the referral program is so strong. Look at this. Come down here. That's like the second thing they talk about. 5% um, at level A, 8% level B. 10% level C and 15% level D. So for an elite net network ranging from 500 to 5,000 referrals, you're getting 15%. That's insane, okay? That's insane. So I don't like this referral program because it's so robust means they need new money a lot. That, my friend, is a red flag. So people you see shilling this one saying, oh, this is the greatest thing since sliced bread, there's probably been a lot of great things since sliced bread, but this is the greatest thing since sliced bread. Um, you got to think about where, what they're trying to do. Are they trying to point you in the direction to put your money, hard earned money into a project that is a copycat project knowingly because they're getting paid a lot or is it working for them in the, in the first 23, seven days it's been live. So they think it's a long-term project and they really are looking out for your best interest. I don't know. But what I do know is that I'm not getting into this one. It might last a while because it's going to take a couple cycles um, and it probably has a lot of Ponzinomics. You know, there's the live data is not that great. All right. This is the performance from 922. You know, they said they traded these things this is the money they made. I could be missing a lot of stuff, but the, the, the website didn't really work well um, when I was doing my research here a few minutes ago or a few hours ago, I should say now. But um, it's just something I'm not going to get into. Doesn't mean you shouldn't. Doesn't mean it's a problem. Doesn't mean I know anything other than you know on this one. But it's just not something that excites me. It's truly a copycat of Kyopi. And it's even right down to this this logo here, kind of like Kyopi's homepage. I don't know if I can get back to it easily. Uh, if you go back to Kyopi's retail site, they have this uh, pretty cool, actually, graphic. They probably took a bunch of pictures and stitched them together. And, but this one, just the QOP website is just way better. And they're trying to add things all the time, which makes it kind of neat. So that's it. I know I've been bugging you for a while. Let's do a quick recap. Let's go back to here. We'll do a quick recap today. Um, so basically, EasyBot 
still making little little returns, a little bit better this week, four dollars versus a dollar, and but but nothing to write home about. Um, have it, I've had that for over a year, so I'm still a big fan of EasyBot. I would love, I wish I would get into EasyBot right now, so I I might put some more more money in next week. We'll see what happens. Um, Kiopi still a performer. I've doubled my stake in Kiopi. If you're thinking about getting in Kiopi. Um, I have a link down below. I'm not telling you to do that, but it's been working for me. Doesn't mean it's going to work for you. It could rug. Don't put anything that you're not willing to lose in there. Um, profit. I have 5.53% profit this week from QOP. That this past week, mostly because I only had one day in the new in my new coin. So I'm still, you know, it's really about a 9% return if you think about what it did with my original my stake that I had, and I added a stake on Thursday, which didn't take place till Friday. So I expect next week to be back to these, you know, eight, nine, ten numbers. Hopefully, we'll see. Rev token, you know, it's there. I'm just going to show you the progress on this token. I might buy a little more of this. Um, I believe in the the project. Doesn't mean you have to. There's no referrals on this. Just telling you about it. Um, very tiny little rev rewards. They haven't really produced the income yet that's going to make, you know, give the revenue here. So or produce the revenue that's going to give the income. BNB All Stars. It's an ROI DAP play. It's working for now. Um, each week, my rewards are a little bit greater, you know, and that's going to stack up and compound. Don't know if it's in for the long run, long run, but it's working so far. It is what it is. Total returns this week: thirty dollars. I'm not. Uh, this is not the returns I want long term. But you know, we got pretty desolate. We lost some really good ones. Um, and I'm really, I'm trying to m turn this money into bigger money. I'm not just throwing a ton more money in here. And that's the point. Can you grow something from $2,000 to a million? This journey might take a while, but you're going to watch it. And we might find some different avenues to get into over time. Right now it's the crypto space it, and it might be something different. I'm working on some passive income plays. I haven't found anything worth writing home about except this one project that I'm going to test out this week. I'll let you know about it. All in all, it was another week in DeFi that it just never ceases to amaze me what goes on in this space. Hope you learned something about the things we talked about. Um, if you have any questions whatsoever, get in the Discord, like, subscribe, share, all of these things, you know, and I have links below to a bunch of stuff. If you have any questions, like I said, check me out in the DeFi. You can, you know, we can chat there. Uh, join the group. If you're spammy, we're going to kick you out. But that's it. Have a great rest of your day. And we'll see you again soon.